everyone, CMC Markets. This is Mish Schneider, Chief Strategist of BlockGage.com, and we're going to very quickly cover a few things. Earnings big time here in the U.S., so I want to look a little bit through the regional banks. We're going to do a little forecasting on Tesla. Then we're going to move to a couple of things on China and the GDP, oil and energy, and wrap up with a look at the metals, which we are still very long-term bullish on. So let's get started. What we're looking at right here is the KRE chart. Since the whole bank debacle, which this clearly predicted, it really hasn't gone very much, and so oh, higher very much. It's just gone sideways. So even though we had a situation where Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, the big banks have done well, the pressure that we're feeling in the regional banks clearly is persisting which could also mean that part of it has to do with commercial real estate. The numbers that have come out in the U.S. haven't been great there. But more importantly is will this continue to be a thorn in the side for the overall equities? And I think it's extremely important to look here because even though the indices are doing much better in the last couple of days, they're still not above their 23 month, which we've covered in former videos. But secondly, that could really change very dramatically should this break down under the most recent low that we established on March 24th at 41.28. We tested it here at 41.45 and then again yesterday at 41.67, but we are getting some buying coming in at those levels. That gives you a very clear line in the sand to look for because if we fail that, then we are definitely indeed going to be going lower. And just to give you some kind of idea of what lower might look like for this, I would say that we could go down to the 2020 low here, which was at 33.48. So figure somewhere between, say, 35 and uh, 33. Now, I also want to take a look at Tesla. Now, this is Tesla on a weekly chart. We'll take a look at the, at the daily chart. But the predictions for Tesla, as with all earnings, if you make earnings expectations low enough, and you raise the bar even slightly, you're going to get some kind of a rally. However, Tesla's got some other issues. Obviously, there's been supply issues, there's been price cuts, and in terms of uh, uh, getting revenue, or I should say tax credits from the U.S. for an EV, Tesla's not on the list. So the question is, in a very, very competitive environment, can China pick up the weight for this? How will this look? Well, Elon's reputation and all he's doing with SpaceX and Twitter over overshoot whatever happens if we just sort of get flat kind of earnings. So if it holds here above the 200-day moving average at 177, 178, good sign. 213 to 215, huge, huge, huge resistance. And even higher than that is its 23-month up at around 250. And again, we were really down there uh, back in... Uh, the beginning of January when we got down to 101, but that is nothing compared to where we were right after COVID. So can this have room to the downside? Absolutely. Can it shoot up and not last? Great. Use these levels. If it cannot get through 215, then I would say probably that means that ultimately it's going to go lower. Now, if we move on to China, I like to look at FXI very quickly. So you know that we wrote an article about that uh, for CMC this week earlier, looking for maybe 5% to really beat expectations. It did beat expectations by coming in at 45 and, and once again, we're looking at a weekly chart. I like this chart. It's going up uh, off of the 50-week moving average, but certainly not wowing anybody. It won't wow anybody unless it clears over 30. But the implications for some of the stocks in this space could be interesting. And just to cover some of my favorites right now, uh, I've been talking about Tencent Music. Uh, let's go to the daily chart on this one. The daily chart here is showing a move above the 50-day moving average that happened yesterday. Yesterday's low now at 772 becomes the support if you like to trade phase changes. However, one little word of caution right here is that we have not gotten through the 50-day moving average in our momentum indicator. So, you know, there's a relationship between momentum and price. Sometimes we see them in sync. Sometimes we see them divergent. And when they are divergent, doesn't necessarily mean that it's the end-all, be-all, but it does mean it's worth paying attention to. So unless we get the momentum back over the 50, if this can hold, say, the low of the day before at 772, then it's possible we'll take another trip lower. But for right now, this to me looks like a very interesting stock. 
And of course, what would be complete without looking at China and looking at Alibaba? It had some news uh, about uh, the fines becoming less from China. Uh, it was enough to get it going this morning. It's been selling off since I've been talking to you. It has to fill this gap. So interesting about gaps. This low 99.20 back on April 11th, and then the high this day was uh, 98.89. But today, the high was 99.17. So literally three bips between this low and this high, which means we didn't fill the gap. That's slightly negative downward slope in the 50, even though it's in a bullish phase. So if we look at momentum, though, the momentum is still holding over the 50. And that's potentially a good sign, but we want to see a little bit more. I would say for me, over 100 would make me feel a lot better. And of course, in terms of the downside, it really needs to hold 93.50. OK, now let's move on to the oil and gas. So the theory is that. China GDP increases, so does the price of oil. And right now, all we're seeing with WTI is, A, we do not want this gap to be filled. So that would give us 75 to 76 as major support in WTIC. This is the continuous contract. This is a 50-day moving average, so we love when we see a gap above that. But it has not been able to clear back above this 200-day moving average. And I know usually I show them in, in blue and green. This is blue and red. So right here, $83, $84 a barrel, that's going to be your key to break through. On the flip side also is going to be your key to hold at these levels right here at around $78 a barrel. And then ultimately, you do not want to see the gap. So right now, what we can say best about the uh, oil market is that it's strong. It's holding the gap. But it isn't quite yet convinced that demand is going to continue to go higher, be it from China or anywhere else for that matter. If we move over to natural gas, this picture looks a little different. Now, we have talked about the fact that it potentially bottomed. Clearly, it broke down under two and closed back above. Uh, and so in this case, that means that the bottom is potentially there. However, if we look at the moving averages, the 50 and the 200, we haven't cleared yet. Love to see a move over 240. Then I'd be more encouraged for a move to three. And we could take it step, like, step by step with this particular instrument. Nonetheless, with China, another big user of actual natural gas, with their link imports being high, we would want to see this match the fact that the uh, China GDP is showing potential continuing growth, not to mention that uh, in Europe, that also the demand would start to rise, considering there was a tremendous amount of supply. So right now, the technicals are probably your best friend. And to wrap up, let's take a look at gold, silver, and copper. What you can't see here on the gold chart is that on the GLD chart, which is the ETF, we actually had an island top, which means it gapped up to that 250 rent level that it went up to the other day, and then it gapped lower, leaving a little island there. But we're not seeing that, obviously, in the continuous contract. But what we are seeing is somewhat of a reversal when you make a new high, and then the next day, you break down under the lows and close below it. Now, if we're looking at the classic 5 to 10% move, that means we can actually see a move back down closer to 1800. That would be interesting. I don't think that will happen. But I do think it's very possible that if we break down under 2,000, if we move over to silver, similar situation, although the SLV chart did not see an actual uh, island top like we saw in GLD, it did have that same similar reversal pattern, new high, close on the lows, below the low of the day before. Now, in this case, we're talking about the potential of a move back down to around 24. And the only way that would counteract that without getting involved in the chop here right in the middle would be either this move down to 24 or, as I mentioned with gold, uh, a move maybe back down to 1850, although that seems so unlikely. Or if we actually took out the high here, which is at about 2620, then that would tell you no more island top. Or in gold's case, it would be uh, at around 190 in GLD or about 2050 in terms of the gold 2050. Then we're going to go much higher. And let's wrap up with a look at copper as well. Now, in copper, these 
topping patterns can only really be valid if they happen after 60 days. So considering this happened on April 17, and the last time we were up here was in February, we're not quite at 60 days, kind of close. That's called a 60 day plus reversal. However, we have seen a little bit of reversal, but we are above the 50 day moving average here at $4, well, a little bit lower, so figure 4.2. And overall, I kind of like this chart. I think it's just really basically having major consolidation. Of course, this will be very tied into what the Fed does with interest rates, what happens with the dollar, what happens with inflation, and what happens with housing. But nonetheless, overall, one has to be impressed considering that we started this year, if you go back here, down at 375, and we've made some nice moves, although be it like everything else in commodities, pretty choppy. So I hope that helps. Thanks so much for watching, and bye for now.